On this episode of Autograph Weekly, we're packing a lot in and providing some valuable insight on street graphing culture and how it relates to recent news from David Hayter and Bella Thorne about their negative experiences with street graphers. Then we're going to look at the brighter side of things and cover a very cool story about an interaction between Tom Hanks and one of his fans. We'll wrap up by talking about what happens when guests and entire conventions get cancelled, like the St. Louis Fan Expo, and we'll wrap things up with a deep dive into the continuing popularity of everyone's favorite, Funko Pops. Brian, if you want to go ahead and get started and tell us a little bit about your recent graphing experience over there in Austin, who you got and how it went. I run Autograph Alliance. I'm on Facebook. Uh, also, I have a website out there. I do mystery box sales and regular autograph sales. Uh, I take consignments to to, um, consi- uh, to different uh, Comic Cons um, and also signings. Uh, but I also uh, do some uh, street graphing. So in the the last uh, like two weeks. Um, the ones that pop off the top of my head since the last time I've uh, talked to you, Tim, is uh, I uh, uh, met Garth Brooks in Austin. Um, also met um, um, Al Jorgensen from the band Ministry. I saw him a couple times. And then also Little Wayne. So uh, those uh, were three different people, uh, three way different genres of music for sure, too, uh, that I... Uh, uh, I met them uh, trying to get some autographs, and uh, uh, with uh, Garth Brooks, uh, he, he, I saw him twice. He denied on both of those uh, requests, and uh, Little Wayne did sign, uh, so that was a, a great thing that uh, that he did uh, sign a couple of albums. I can show those off later on, and I also did have Al Jorgensen from Ministry. Uh, he's the head singer of that band. Uh, he signed... Uh, uh for me also in the last couple of weeks nice can you uh speak to a little bit about like how long you guys were out there waiting like who was there what the scene was like uh trying to get these autographs well um i i, I don't want to go into t- too much uh details on that and it, it, it's it, it, on the on the street graphing like you kind of call it culture it is a, a little bit on the hush hush side on you know you know in, in detail what it's kind of uh uh is taking place out there but i can tell you overall um it's usually not a you know a a quick thing that's happening usually when you're going out for a celebrity and you're trying to obtain their autograph out there that's not like at a comic-con or whatnot i mean i mean i've waited for six hours on some people i've waited for eight i've waited for 12. uh you can wait overnight uh, there is is a is a is a big hustle. I mean, you might be going to different lo- multiple locations for one a celebrity. Um, it, it it is a lot. It, it is a long grind, a lot of hours, late nights, things of that type of nature um, of doing it. I mean, every once in a while, you'll have those great uh, things that happen when you you know get to a venue or get to a place, and uh, you run into that celebrity in the first three minutes, and they sign. And then you go to a new place and all of a sudden you run into that next celebrity real fast. But that's a very, you know, like rare thing that w- that, that, that that has happened. Those are those uh, days where you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that it was so easy today. But it's definitely not like that every day. The majority of the times it is a grind. It is, a, you know, uh, you know, a lot of work, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, tracking down and doing your research and things like that, of, uh, you know, trying to get in front of these celebrities. Hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's almost like a, a stakeout in some sense where you're just kind of there hoping uh, the person's going to arrive to the scene or come out from whatever interview or production or whatever they're doing there. If it's like a comedy venue or something like that, just waiting outside the venue, hoping that they're going to come out and uh, sign for you when they do. And that's not always a guarantee, right? So no, not at all. we have in that 12 hour day and they come out and, uh, you know, they've had a long day, too, and they just don't want to sign. So that's uh, kind that's of the way it is, unfortunately. Um, but I want to I want to pick your brain about that because it has been in the news uh, as far as street graphers and their interactions with celebrities. Like there was just uh, some recent headlines about Bill Hader, and he was talking about some of his experiences with street graphers. And basically, he was saying, um, and this is like a story that's familiar with people who know Frank Oz, who stopped signing because of Star Wars fans asking for autographs. But Bill Hader, he did some work with BB-8. And he basically did some voicing work where he came in and made some sounds and blips and bloops, <laughs> that kind of thing. And, um, you know, so he was getting 
people to ask him to sign BB-8 images. And basically he recounted a story about how he was coming out of a venue one night and then there was, uh, there was this guy and his daughter there and he basically had asked his daughter to go up to Bill and ask for an autograph, get uh, him to sign some BBA stuff on his behalf, basically kind of using his daughter as, you know, a little bit of a pawn there, I guess, is what he saw it. And uh, so I guess he signed initially. And then, you know, the day went on and like, I guess kind of late into the night, he met the same uh, guy and his daughter again. And he again was putting the daughter out there and he just like, I guess, you know, really didn't like that the daughter was out there so late and he was using her, keeping her out there. And like you said, it's like a long day, right? So that's that's a lot for a kid. Like we're both dads. So uh, I don't think we would personally ever bring our kids. Yours are much older. So I guess you could now, but like when they were young, um, we wouldn't ever bring our kids out there to like <laughs> wait around with us all day, especially you can be in the sun. The conditions cannot be all that great. So it's not the best thing. I totally understand where he's coming from. But Bill had a quote saying that autograph people don't like me and I won't sign things. And that's because uh, of the way this basically went down. And, um, you know, we've seen, like I mentioned, with uh, Frank Oz, where he had Star Wars fans coming up to him. And in order to, like, kind of combat the reselling aspect of this, because that's what it's really all about with Bill Hader. Like, he, he knew that this wasn't really for his daughter, right, for this guy's daughter it was for him to resell it on so he i guess you know didn't really like that and the same thing with frank oz he would dedicate all of his autographs on the street right so it'd be like to tim to brian that kind of thing in order to combat that but then some guy uh you know kind of mouthed off to frank oz and was like hey i'm just gonna go ahead and dedicate it. i'm just gonna remove this dedication and put it on ebay anyway and uh that kind of set him off and that's uh, from my understanding the impetus of why he no longer signs uh star wars items pretty much in general and definitely on the street so um, there's a lot of these kind of negative interactions that celebrities sometimes have uh, with the autograph collectors. And, you know, what do you think that's all about? Is it just a couple of bad seeds out there or is this kind of like bad behavior that you see a lot? Or is it mostly like people who are minding their P's and Q's out there and being gracious and generous? Like, what's your experience been, Brian? Sure. Um so you know i think it is that kind of uh those those, those uh, you know kind of some bad seeds out there sometimes and i think you know a lot more of this like stuff you might see out in the california and you know new york area i have never uh graphed in any of those two areas you know but you know the, the and it might just be you know luck of the draw or whatever but i'm sure they have a lot more interactions but i'm sure we've all seen videos maybe uh people you know, being a little too pushy, uh, you know, after being denied to keep on pushing and to keep on going and things like that, um, you know, or big crowds and things of that type of nature. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, that, 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 that those one off maybe like bad seeds or, or what or whatnot. And I know from the article, I did read that same post, you know, a few sometime this last week about Bill Hader and, uh, you know, it doesn't give us tons of context, you know, how old is their kid? Is their kid 20 years old, you know, are they five, you know, or are they 13? Uh, I still three in the morning is pretty late to be out like in the city, even at that late. Um, you know, I have had my son, not for autographs, but I have had my son, but he was about 13, 14 and I paid them. Um, and I had nothing to do with autographs. I was getting some, uh, some, uh, prints, uh, that I wanted that were coming out and, uh, from Mondo posters when they were real big in the day. And mm -hmm. I offered my, I didn't, it wasn't a, a force thing. And it was during the day, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, at nighttime till 3.30 in the morning or anything crazy, you know, offered him, you know, a, a cash sum if he wanted to hang out and I'd bring him, you know, lunch and, you know, have uh, his skateboard out there so he could skate on a, because I knew the area where there was a nice big sidewalk and things of that type of nature. And sure he got bored, but, you know, it was uh, more money that he'd be making than, you know, cutting yards all day that day that I paid them. Uh, but, yeah. uh, I definitely did want some, uh, some extra prints that day, but I def but I definitely want to have, you know, like kids in like downtown areas. If I'm thinking, you know, like if Bill Hader's like in LA, you know, it just doesn't sound that safe. Uh, you know, but you know, I'm not that person's parent, but I do think it's, a, you know, I think it's those one-offs, you know, it's from what I see, sometimes it happens, you know, like with maybe people being pushy or, you know, people being aggressive. A lot of times what I've experienced is that the uh, people that have been doing this quite a while, 
uh, will kind of, you know, regulate uh, within those groups and make sure people are behaving and, you know, making sure that people are staying in line and being respectful and being, uh, you know, courteous, you know, uh, you know, once somebody tells me no, and, and, you know, that's it, you know, I understand that that's it, you know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know, keep on pushing the line. I've seen that happen, you know, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and just keep on going or, you know, I, I haven't seen anybody really ever be rude to a, a celebrity, but I have seen that on tape, you know, like in some of the other bigger cities when, you know, when we've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm on, on the same page with you. Like, I'm, I'm not out there myself, but uh, I do, you know, interact with a lot of street graphers. Um, I'm like, I rely on them as a source for autographs. So I'm always out there trying to purchase from them for sure. So I have a lot of experiences. And uh, what came to mind was uh, the recent Super Mario Brothers movie premiere. I was watching a podcast from Kit and Krista, who are former Nintendo employees, and they were at the premiere of the movie. And they like, you know, they're Nintendo employees. They're not like, movie stars or anything like that sure. so they aren't really exposed to this kind of thing but they when they were doing the red carpet uh, mr miyamoto who is the uh creator of the mario brothers uh when he was there i guess apparently he was basically mobbed by all these autograph collectors there and um kind of like you were saying uh i did purchase a poster that was signed by some of the cast there and the person i bought it from he was basically telling me that yeah the the crowd did get unruly but you know, him and a bunch of other collectors were trying their best to kind of uh, control the crowd and like get people to not be crazy and insane. So I think there's definitely, you know, some people who just don't know how to act. And there's uh, those good people who unfortunately kind of get lumped in with those bad actors and uh, everybody gets painted with a really broad brush there, unfortunately, because they came away, Kim Krista came away with this notion that, oh, these these autograph collectors were just bad people. They were in it only for the money, all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's definitely, you know, good people in the hobby. It's not all bad actors. But, um, you know, we hear these stories time and time again of people doing bad stuff and kind of making a bad name for the hobby. Um, another one that made headlines recently was Bella Thorne. She recently had an interview where she was talking about autograph collectors and uh, she actually seemed to have like a balanced opinion about it because she was like, you know, I understand that this is people's jobs and I'm not, um, you know, I'm not putting it against them for going out there and asking for my autograph. But uh, there was one collector in particular that really stood out to her because he was trying to give her these uh, modeling shots from when she was only 16. And, uh, you know, he was coming to commenting to her how sexy the shots were and that kind of stuff. And you know, it really crossed the line for her because she was a minor at the time when these were taken and the guy was being very insistent and, you know, a little bit creepy about it. So, uh, you know, despite that interaction, like I said, she was still like understanding that, hey, people have to be out there making a living and doing this kind of stuff. Um, so, Brian, do you think most people who are doing this on the street, is this their like full time job or are they like, are they so crazy about this because this is how they make ends meet? This is what they're going to do to pay their bills? Or what's what do you think the demographic is out there for the most part? Oh, I, I don't know. I think every town would be a little bit different or every area. So, you know, I honestly couldn't give you like the uh, the numbers on that just because you know, I, I think it's probably different wherever. I think there is, of course, some some people that make this as their, their full time gig. And there's, you know, definitely people that come out to part time collect. But even the full time people, I mean, a lot, a lot of those people, they are grabbing drafts for their own collections. They're grabbing things that they that they're, there's certain people that maybe they only go see certain people because that's you know who they want to graph and they enjoy meeting those celebrities and those interactions and getting those autographs as a um, uh, as part of their collections. And they may also sell some out there. Um, I, I think that the, the whole underage thing is a little bit creepy in in my opinion. Um, but then it also goes back on, you know, she was taking really sexy photos like that at the age of 16. That's kind of a little bit odd too, you know, I guess with today's climate. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I've never, you know, uh, tr uh, would try to get like somebody under the age of, you know, that would have underage photos like that and trying to get, you know, sexy photos of them i think that's a little bit inappropriate and you know what there is going to be some people out there and some celebrities that uh 
you know, think that, uh, you, you know, that, that, you know, maybe disagree with it, but then, you know, there's plenty of celebrities that respect the hustle and respect that you're, that, that you are doing so much work. You know, I just read a post today uh, or yesterday about uh, Keanu Reeves saying that, you know, uh, uh, showing respect to, you know, everyone has to, I understand people want to have a hustle. I understand, you know, people maybe want to, you know, to, uh to make some extra money um i understand that people might want my autograph and want to you know uh fill my presence through my autograph on their item that might be hanging on their house and, and hanging up at their home and these people are facilitating that and you know he showed respect that way i've met other celebrities in in in, in person and them saying you know that uh, we respect what you do you know you 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 do a lot of hustle out there you know and uh the, 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 what you do i mean you could do uh you'd be doing a whole lot more you know uh worse stuff out there in, in the world to to make money for sure uh so i think that you have two sides of those coins you know if you've had a really bad experience you know maybe as a celebrity you don't want to deal with it anymore and you're over it you know understandable and then you have the other side that you know respects the hustle you know and uh you know shows their love through you know giving some autographs like that to fans uh you know sellers whoever it might be um out there to you know to show their their appreciation back because uh, you know, they, they are super famous. They have made it to that level where people want to meet them and people do want to obtain their autographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think you're right about that. Like, it's not just totally antagonistic. I've definitely seen plenty of videos where these uh, street graphers are out there so often and they have uh, met these celebrities so many times that they've actually built, you know, relationships with them. And there's uh, some pretty friendly and cordial interactions. Like, it's not all uh, this, uh, you know, doom and gloom kind of interaction out there. A lot of it can be quite friendly. They Celebrities can be happy to see these graphers sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, kind of straight, no emotion type thing. They go in, they sign, whatever. But it's not always this negative experience that we see in the media. So I think it is good to note that, hey, there are two sides of this coin. And, um, you know, it, I think it helps the celebrities too. Like, I don't think it's quite fair to say, hey, this guy... Uh, he's out there, even if he is just a dealer, right? Uh, he's out there, he's getting the autograph and he's going to resell it. Uh, I don't think that's right to say that they're greedy. Like these people are somewhere in California, somewhere in New York. I'm out here in Texas. There's not a lot of opportunities for me to go and meet these people. So somebody is doing me a service by going out there, waiting the 12 hours and getting the signature for me. Um, so even though maybe they're not uh, a diehard fan of that person and they're just getting it to make a buck, uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of that person maybe, and I want to pay the money to get there, and I'm paying for the convenience, and for the time because I don't have 12 hours. I got two little kids. I even if I had the time, I couldn't take them out there and get these graphs for me. Um, the distance is too far, so they're actually really doing a big service, and um, you know I think that's something that should be credited and not just like dismissed out of hand. Oh yeah, it's it's easy to 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 see the negative because that's what the media or the Facebook posts might show you. But then there's tons of other interactions that uh, you know that, that the mainstream public doesn't see. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe Keanu Reeves signing autographs and being happy to do so, and you know, the, you know, a, a different type of celebrity that uh, yeah, that you're meeting and you know is is glad to meet his fans, glad to meet the other people, and like you said, uh, and 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 don't mind signing some autographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, there's definitely a lot of those negative stories in the news, but there was also a pretty cool one regarding Tom Hanks. Now, I'm not too sure uh, how he is with signing autographs on the street, but he did have uh, a really cool interaction through fan mail. So one of his fans uh, sent him a letter, and in return back, you know, sometimes he's been known to he uses a typewriter. He's a big typewriter enthusiast, right? So he's been known to typewrite these letters back to people, do a autograph on them, and that's been pretty cool. Uh, and sometimes these stories get out there and they make big news. Like in the past, somebody was a typewriter seller in the UK and they um, they did like, they do art with a typewriter, just like kind of like ASCII art, right? With using the characters on the typewriter to make a picture. They sent that to Tom Hanks, he sent it back to him signed. Uh, but then I haven't seen anything like this one, uh, which just made the news where Tom Hanks actually sent a whole like vintage 100 year old typewriter to somebody that was signed, like just as a gift in response to a letter. So uh, there's definitely like appreciation from these celebrities to fans. It's not all this negative stuff. There's these really cool stories where someone like Tom Hanks is who's uh, definitely a huge actor, still very relevant. 
reaching out and supporting his fans. I've seen letters where uh, I know someone who wrote about uh, their autism and how the Forrest Gump movie really kind of helped them uh, through their own journey of understanding autism. And he wrote them back a very supporting typewritten letter on there. And uh, it seems like he, I don't think he reads everyone personally, but they definitely go through a secretary and they get filtered to him. And he reads uh, from what it seems like a good amount of these uh, fan letters. And if you take the time to especially typewrite your letter on an actual typewriter, um, you know, that's probably even more chance that you're going to get your letter through to him. So I just want to bring that up, that there are some really good fan and celebrity interactions, maybe not always on the street, but certainly at least through fan mail, sometimes these interactions can take place and they can be very positive. And that was a pretty cool one. Like the, the typewriter definitely looks like an antique. It looks like something that could be on display. And uh, next thing I have, I have the letter. He wrote, sent the typewriter with a letter and he said, uh, to who it may concern, uh, Tom Hanks here, I'm uh, presenting you with this typewriter. It's an Underwood with an unknown model. Uh, to do with as you please, service it, keep it as is, repair it and keep or sell, display or use. On one hand, you are taking off my shelves and out of my greater world. On the other, you are giving it a space, uh, you're giving me space and less clutter. On the third hand, uh, you just may give it uh, the miracle of, of a machine and getting a fuller life. So he's like saying, hey, here's this typewriter. I don't care what you do with it. If you want to sell it for profit, if you want to keep it, not use it, if you want to use it, great. Uh, you know, I hope that you use it and you give it a second life and you, you know, put this incredible machine that he has a lot of passion and appreciation for into use and give it some further life. So I, I thought that was just a really cool story. Uh, yeah, I've heard about his uh, love for typewriters in the past. I've never met Tom Hanks. I have heard that he is uh, pretty tough in person and actually can get uh, sometimes nasty, but I'm sure that uh, he has, has had his fair share of some, uh, of uh, you know, not some not nice people to him, you know, out there. But uh, like I said, I don't, I, I, I've never met him. I can't personally speak on any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so transitioning, I did want to also talk about the St. Louis Fan Expo. So I don't know if you're aware of this, Brian, but uh, the convention was canceled last month. And originally, St. Louis Fan Expo was one of the Wizarding World conventions, and uh, Fan Expo made a deal to like basically buy out of buy out a lot of these conventions across the country that were going on, mm -hmm. and they are now being continued under the Fan Expo name. And uh, basically, last year, the reports of exactly how many people were in attendance were not out there, but a local Fox News station, uh, they quoted in the hundreds. Uh, I'm sure it was more than, couldn't have been in the hundreds. It had to be at least a couple of thousands, but um, years prior to that were tens of thousands. And what do you think is the cause of this convention possibly being um, canceled? Do you think it's, is it the economy that's, you know, just really uh, on a downturn right now? Or do you think there's still the same kind of interest in the hobby right now? Could we maybe see, be seeing a waning in interest in autographs and meeting celebrities or any ideas on what you think might be the cause behind this convention getting canceled and the lower numbers there in St. Louis? Um, yeah, uh, on, the, uh, on that topic, I don't think it's too much the economy because um, you know, Dallas Fan Expo is is coming up. Their VIP pass has been sold out for you know over a month or plus now, uh, and you know their price tags are pretty expensive. And I know some of their guests have already sold out their autographs and things of that type of nature. So I think that the um, uh, that the, the collectors are still going. But if you go back to like where you uh, had started at on Wizard World, Wizard World used to have a lot of different. Uh, Comic cons that were um, all, like all over the place. I don't know exactly how many uh, that they had going before they had folded. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when they, uh, and I know that, they, like you said, they had got acquired uh, through some of the fan expo um, uh, uh, companies. But some of those, uh, um, not all the ones that they acquired, did they keep fan expos going? So, for example, they used to have a Wizard World that was happening, you know, every year in Austin. And there's not an Austin Fan Expo. There's been some other Austin Comic Cons to start up that are totally different, uh, but maybe not in as large scale as the Wizard World had. But they must have evaluated, you know, like what cities and what the attendance was 
that maybe they made a bad maybe they made, made a bad decision you know for trying to keep that one open and maybe there was some poor attendance i don't know i don't know all the numbers there um you know on on what they they have i also don't know i know they said their like your attendance was down i don't know their list of their um of their uh, you know that they, the list of their big headliners they had i honestly don't remember last year seeing them advertise very much and i don't remember any big guests that were going there off the top of my head i'm trying to search right now as we speak and i'm just not uh i, I just don't know if the advertisements have all been pulled down i'm not just seeing a lot of uh um uh, things for uh last year maybe i'm missing it and i'll keep on searching here but i think it might just be you know that area some areas you know are better than others for you know that type of stuff i, I just don't know uh you know on how that you know, con was performing when it was uh um uh the uh wizard world mm -hmm. yeah so uh, yeah it's really kind of ambiguous as to exactly what the cause was i think it might have something to do with the economy I'm not entirely sure like you said there are definitely people still going out there and buying autographs uh, from your own personal experience with Autograph Alliance, I know you do a lot of mystery boxes there, and I think you've had like a lot more success with the low roller boxes, right? Which are at a more affordable price point. Um, do you think? Are you having what's what's the success been with the low rollers compared to uh, your higher end boxes, and what's the response sure. from your customers? Um, I do think uh, part of that is you know due to the economy. Um, it, whenever you know guy, gas prices you know uh shot uh did shoot up last year i was doing some boxes that were closer to about the 135 to the 150 dollar mark and you can see the boxes behind me usually during when i'm doing a show every box back here will have an autograph in it uh you'll pre-purchase that amount and then i'll have some big prizes in the in there that i'll advertise and um uh last year i was doing a lot of them around the 135 150 dollar mark and you know things did slow down you know around uh the last fall uh time uh that was also the time you know where everybody's money had uh uh it was also running out of you know the free money they were getting in from the government back then so you know during that time of you know covid we did really saw a market shoot up in everything you know collectibles baseball cards football cards comic books autographs we saw price increases across the board into um uh the collecting market um and uh but i definitely have been seeing some more um successes uh with uh some of the uh the lower price points out there and uh still being able to provide some uh, great autographs to people um because i know that you know prices are up at the grocery store prices are up out there i think if people have a, a, a you know are really wanting to to uh uh do some of these uh comic cons you know i i think it's important to make sure that you're advertising you know enough in advance uh you're giving your fans enough time to travel giving enough your fans to book things uh make uh make it well known like uh who your big guest in i like i said i just don't know enough on their on their back end but uh um i i know that the lower price point has been better but there still is a big market for those people that are you know looking for those high-end graphs and want that high-end stuff you know i was just at a at a uh a state auction a, a couple of weeks ago i was talking about and you know i saw a painting and you know i don't know art very well you know uh sell for fifty thousand dollars you know i saw mm -hmm. uh, nasa autographs uh you know sell for premium prices and of course guns and you know different collectibles you know so money is still being spent out there i think that that uh, um if, if the collectors are there there you know they definitely are you know still love to collect and you know they, they, they yeah i think once you're a big collector you got that collecting bug i know i've had it since the 80s mm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah for sure yeah it's it's hard to stop even when uh, your wallet is telling you no it's <laughs> it's still hard to stop so um yeah i think we might definitely see even as the economy goes down people still trying to cut corners elsewhere to keep the hobby going for them as much as possible because it is is hard to stop but uh thankfully one area where the price for something wasn't too crazy bad with all the inflation was the winona rider signing so we talked about it last time we were kind of speculating on what the price might be uh, we looked on eBay, we saw that autographs there were going for $1,500 or more. So that really had, in my mind, that was going to be kind of a more expensive 
autograph something maybe closer to the $500 range. Uh, but now they have Star Wars Autograph Universe, who's doing the signing, have announced the price. And it was actually, I was pretty surprised that it was only starting at $225, going all the way up to $300, depending on the size for those larger items, with additional add ons for character names at $100 or personalization uh, for another $100. But you could get an autograph there for as cheap as two twenty five dollars from Renona, Renona Ryder. So what did you think about that price? Do you think that was pretty sure. fair? Um, yes, um, I was actually listening to last week's episode when I was on a little vacation last week at the beach. And uh, I was listening to y'all guys that episode. Y'all had a great episode. And uh, I know everybody was guessing on different prices. And I didn't get to get on, on the record that time. But I was like smack dab in the middle of this price. I actually had told my wife, I go, I bet she's going to be about 250. Uh, so mm -hmm. my gate, I, I was like right in there. And then when it came out, I was like, all right, I guessed right on that one. Just a little personal, you know, yeah. uh, like, uh, like if you make your, your, your trash in the trash can from a little shot, that's how I felt. <laughs> um, <laughs> but nice. I definitely think that's a, a, a good price for her. Uh, you know, especially if you need to complete some posters from some movies that you've been on. I definitely want to get an 8 by 10 or maybe even an 11 by 14 by her. I'd be looking to complete some cast pieces or potential cast pieces. Stranger Things, where you've already had a bunch of autographs. I got a Stranger Things poster back there that's autographed by a lot of the cast, but it is missing her. Um, and I do need to get her, and I need to get, also get Nancy from Stranger Things on there. So I might end up signing up for uh, both of those and sending it off because... I don't think Nancy has ever really done a Comic Con, or she's done one. She's uh, and I don't remember her real name. I apologize. And I know that uh, Winona Ryder has, you know, doesn't do stuff like that and doesn't have send-ins. So it might be my only time to get her added to that. Um, I don't have any big other uh, posters that are started for her. I know she'd be great on some other things out there. Of course, Beetlejuice, some other, you know, uh, 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 cool shots, you know. So um, I would definitely get, some, if you were getting some just like steals, maybe some bigger uh, things, you know, uh, maybe 16 by 20s. I don't know. Or I guess you could have a nice 11 by 14, but do you have the potential? Maybe you could add like Michael Keaton to it or add some other cast members. I would definitely leave it open to something that you could add, you know, extra cast members to if you are doing a photo. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think Natalie Dyer, right? Is that? Yes, the, uh, you know that. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, no problem. But uh, I, I think you're right on the money. Was like I think my kind of policy is if I'm spending anything over than over a hundred dollars or even kind of approaching that, I I don't want to get an eight by ten. Like it's that's just too much money to spend on such a small format of a photo. So I would definitely be going for the larger si sizes on this. Um, you know, you, at the two hundred twenty-five dollar mark, you're spending enough money where you should be getting something that looks premium and quality. You don't want to put that money into an eight by ten and then wind up having something that's not worth what you put into it. But yeah. if you get something that's larger, and a little bit more premium, then yeah, you can put in the money and you can be more assured that if you comes the time when you actually need to sell the item, uh, you know, because you're going through financial hardships or you're tired of it, you know, whatever the case may be, that you can actually recoup the investment and hopefully make some money on top of that. It's going to be a lot harder when you're doing something on just an eight by 10. So you yep. definitely want to pick the item that you're going to send in carefully. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's a little bit of an oxymoron to be paying a hundred extra dollars to put a personalization on there, like dedicating it to Tim or to Brian, uh, because you probably, you paid a hundred dollars and you probably easily devalued it by a hundred dollars <laughs> so. yes i think by paying a hundred dollars you actually shoot yourself in the foot with a 200 dollars hit almost so if you spent 325 let's say you got the smallest one and you paid that personalization to tim um you know or to brian or whatever your name is out there uh mm -hmm. I, you basically threw that hundred dollars out and then took a hundred dollars off what you paid i would i, I would put out there because you've got to find somebody else that's going to want that to Tim or to Brian, whatever it would be. And it's a, it, people want, it, for the most part, one, the, 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 the collectors and autographs for the most part want something that's not personalized, hasn't usually had a personal a, a personalization removed, if possible. Sometimes you can't avoid it for some actors like Frank Oz. Um, yeah. But, uh, you, you know, I, I always recommend, you know, to even the novice collectors, you know, I'm in lines at Comic-Cons and I hear somebody telling me or showing me what they're going to get autographed. 
and they're telling me they want or the 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 the, the people the volunteers of the comic con are passing out sticky notes because they want them to put to brian or to tim or whatever it's going to be and i'm always trying to tell people don't add your name on there and i try to say it in a nice way you know and mm -hmm. i give them the reasons behind it like we're kind of talking right now you're spending a lot of money on this autograph and you never know what might happen to that autograph and this is the response I get back from them use nine times out of 10. I'm going to keep this item forever. It's never going to leave my side again. Well, you mm -hmm. know what? I've had plenty of items. I thought about that before and I've ended up having to maybe move them because something has come up, you know, sometimes, you know, eating and having it, 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 and, you know, uh, you know, having paying your bills or whatever you might need, or maybe it's going on a vacation and you need to, dis and instead of, you know, dipping into your savings, you rather use an item. And maybe that item was the best thing for you five years ago, but now five years in the future, you might think differently. You know what I mean? And if you have that personalization, you're not going to be able to sell it as much as like a personalized Mark Hamill, you know, on, you know, I don't know, a 16 by 20 versus one that's too Brian, you know? Yeah. And I mean, no matter how much we love something like, you know, we all loved Game of Thrones when we were in the middle of it. And, yep. um, you know, even if you still loved it through the last season, which a lot of people like kind of fell out of love with it at that point, right at the very end, even if you still love it now, like, you know, the excitement does wear off eventually. And it's not like, you know, we're not in the middle of it. There's not new episodes coming out. So your interest does tend to wean over time. So no matter how much you thought you were going to keep it forever, you know, odds are you at some point you're going to move on from liking that kind of thing yep. and you might want to upgrade, switch it out, do something else. I one, of the, one of the more funny scenarios. I was just oh, go ahead. switch off of that subject. The other mm -hmm. thing I usually tell people in lines, you know, or even on Facebook about personalizing is that even if you decide you're that person that says you're going to keep that item forever and you do live up to that, you know, all the way through and you and but out there one day you will not be here. One day these items will outlive you and you will be gone. And then, you know, a lot of people say, you know, well, th those are all going to go to my wife. They're all going to go to my kids. Well, if you're at the end of the year at life and you're, it's time for you to leave this earth, one day your family's going to have to deal with all of your uh, items. And if you want to leave your family with the best nest egg possible, and you're looking at this type of stuff with any type of value, I know even if you're not even looking at any type of value, but would you rather leave your 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 loved one, uh, you know, an item worth two hundred dollars or you know eight hundred dollars, you know, sometimes depending on what kind of item it is, you know, or even bigger dollar amounts. So you know, we can't make it out of this life alive. You will expire one day. Mm -hmm. No one made it out alive, yep. and your your loved ones will have this stuff. Um, you know, um, I always even recommend, I know this goes a little bit different subject and we could talk about it on another episode, but, you know, talking about, you know, life and death, it does happen to everybody. Have an emergency contact. If you have big collections of people that, you know, your loved ones can reach out to, uh, to your friends, you know, that collect and know that, you know, your family's going to get the maximum dollar amount. But I won't go into that, uh, that uh, big of it because uh, I know we got uh, more topics to go. This on personalizations, I always try to weigh in off the personalizations. I think the cost on the personalizations and the care claims at 100 each should probably actually be closer to about $50 each. You know, I think that'd be a little bit more palpable, you know, for a character name. 100 bucks is a little bit high for my taste, but I know that uh, uh, I know that's been a big thing for a lot of companies with private signings is adding in those uh, uh, exclusive character names. Yeah, for sure. Like at another point on the uh, the dedications, I can't tell you like how many times I've seen in a Facebook group where somebody like, you know, just they dragged their wife to a convention and they met a celebrity together and they got, you know, to the person and their wife's name on there. And then they get divorced at some point and they got all these got all these autographs with their wife's name on it. <laughs> so oh, um, one more pet peeve I'll throw out on like uh, signing things. And if you're going to cons or whatever. I personally don't ever like taking photos with that celebrity and then paying that uh, celebrity multiple hundreds of dollars to sign that same photo op that I just talked. Because for sure, no one else is ever going to want that photo of you and that person <laughs> that was signed. And even after you pass away, that will be not going anywhere to help out your family or anything else like that. You know, uh, some people say bury me with my autographs, but uh, 
you know, we all know that's not probably reasonable. It's not going to happen. So um, that's another thing I try to shy people away from, but I usually don't like to touch that one because I usually love that celebrity so much. They want to get it signed and they have that big fandom, but it just, it, I, I, I think what I'm thinking of spending money, my hard earned money that I'm making, that it, it's just hard. It, I, if something happens, I want to be able to make sure that I can do something else with that item if needed. Hopefully I won't have to, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, insurance that, that everybody pays medical, dental, eye, car, everybody mm -hmm. has to have it nowadays. It's almost the same thing. And you don't want to kind of kick yourself in the face with the personalization or signing a photo op uh, photo. Yeah, I, I do see that all the times so people getting the photo op sign and that's like, kind of the ultimate level of personalization <laughs> like yeah. not only is it dedicated to me but it's not a picture of me with the, the celebrity and um you know i i get why they're doing that you know that's a very personal moment it means a lot to them they want to get that sign because it's a special image for them but uh, if you just like to hold back for a second before you do that like it if you have the photo framed right next to an autographed picture of it, do you get the same effect and does it maybe even look cooler and it does it now convey more value? Like, could you just do it in a little bit better way, still get the autograph, still get the photo op and then just have them together and then just, you know, let the photo op be a photo op and let an autograph be an autograph. I don't know if there's necessarily a need to actually combine those because uh, the net gain out of there, you're really kind of shooting yourself in the foot with that. So. Uh, hundred percent on the same page with you on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. You wanted to, uh, you also wanted to talk about the canceling at, uh, comic Palooza, right? Oh yeah. Uh, we had Carl Urban that canceled it. Uh, used to come up Palooza. I know a, a, uh, two episodes ago, we were talking about comic Palooza coming up. Um, I, I know he's canceled, I believe, uh, last year and now he can canceled, uh, this year and it happens that, uh, at different comic cons, you know, even some of the major stars, you know, different obligations come up for filming or whatnot. And I usually think they have that built into their contracts. I'm not a hundred percent, you know, if a filming offer comes up, they can cancel because that seems to happen quite often with them. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's just a shame for Comet Palooza because we already kind of talked about, you know, their, their uh, lineup to me is a little bit on the weaker side. I would like to see some bigger names or, you know, uh, even more names. And uh, that was to me like the second biggest name out there, I would think. But I mean, there might be some other close contenders. Uh, but I, think, I, I know he's like you know a, a big member of the boys episodes that I like to watch on Amazon Prime. And I was hoping he was going to be there, you know, uh, with uh, some of the other uh, celebrities from that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, we have uh, here the superhero car show and Comic Con. And they are waiting to do a bunch of their celebrity guest announcements to the last minute. And why that's that's like a real bummer that you have to wait because you all want to know who's coming and when. But when you announce the guests pretty far out, then there is this possibility that they might cancel on you. So it's kind of like a balancing act because you don't want to announce somebody who a lot of people are, especially uh, him, who's like a one of the headliners there. So someone might be coming to the con just to see him. So they've already bought their ticket. They've already made a hotel room reservation, which may or may not be refundable. So people have already sunk money into this expecting for him to be there. And uh, now, you know, they might just be out of the money or forced to go and just to see some of the other guests who maybe they weren't so excited about. So, you know, it's really good to announce these to generate ticket sales early and get the interest up and all that, because without the celebrity guests and knowing who's going to be there, uh, you know, the convention's kind of dead in the water. So it's a balancing act and you might, you're basically risking people being out of money, a lot, uh, being out of pocket, a lot of money if the guests canceled. And like he said, there's contractual ob obligations that they have with doing their filming and, you know, schedules sometimes don't line up. So they think, yeah, I can do it, uh, you know, maybe six months prior, but then as they get closer to production dates, things change and people do cancel all the time. Like, you know, sometimes it's just an individual guest. I mean, typically any convention, I mean, you're, you're pretty lucky if they have zero cancellations, right? So you can expect uh, a small handful of cancellations to happen with basically any convention. That's kind of just the way it works. Um, but we had, what was it? That, which one was totally canceled? Was it the Alamo City Comic Con where Ewan McGregor was supposed to be there? Oh, uh, no, that was a superhero con. Oh, um, mm -hmm. But I think it was more of, uh, I don't have all the details, so I don't want to misspeak on anything, but I think it was more of the, I think Hayden Christensen and Ewan had canceled. 
Um, and then they ended up canceling the whole con because I think that was their, their biggest two guests. And it was kind of still during the COVID time. So it was supposed to be like an outdoor con. So I kind of actually glad that one didn't go off because I do like their, their, their location they do have over at the Freeman in both the, in the multiple different buildings they have in the big uh, out there. There's plenty of space and stuff like that. So uh, I'm sure it would have been hot in the dead of summer over at Fiesta, Texas, waiting out in lines uh, for those guys, uh, even if they came. Yeah, and I think that that just kind of goes to show like how dependent these conventions are on their celebrity guests that they had their two headliners cancel at the last minute. And at this time, they uh, they were like a couple of days out from the show and uh, the, two, the two headliners canceled. They just decided to cancel the whole show and uh, people were had gotten on a plane the day before because it was like a I think it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday show. Uh, and they had gotten on the plane the day before and uh, they land and they open their phone and they see this cancellation message. Like they came in from out of state to go to the convention in San Antonio and they find out that it's canceled. So yeah, these yeah, I, I think it was are very highly dependent on the guests. Uh, I think it was COVID concerns from both mm -hmm. of the, uh, th those celebrities and, um, that uh, yeah, it, it does suck when that happened. But the customer service on the back end, I can say uh, from uh, uh, from Superhero Car Show, an organization of cons is you know some of the top or the best. I, I got I you know I got we all got refunds fairly quickly. Uh, we all got uh, you know you know uh, emails about you know. Uh, apologies even made up for the next year on getting, you know, maybe different uh, VIP passes honored and things of that uh, nature. Uh, and, 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 their, and their common con is super organized from the way that they do group numbers and things like that. So you're not having to wait into big, long lines forever. Uh, so it, it's one of the, it's some of the best, uh, you know, customer service out there for Comic Cons and some of the best organized uh uh, uh, Comic Con that I that I do go to. It was this unfortunate event I think that happened that year. So so weird with like everything going on with COVID too. Yeah, it was definitely a funny time, and uh, a lot of change in the industry happened from that. So I wouldn't expect to see more, you know, outright convention cancellations. I think that was kind of like a one-off thing, but sure. definitely the individual guest cancellations are something that we need to expect. And uh, if you're going to a convention for just one person uh you know think twice before you make that non-refundable hotel room reservation or your flight reservation or you sink in any kind of serious money uh, you might want to as much as you can wait till the last minute uh, for some of these things if you're just there for one person because people can cancel and they can cancel pretty close to a show going on so that should just be a lesson to all of us i would say sure. mm -hmm. uh brian so we talked about your adventures in Austin, doing some autograph collecting there. Do you want to show us off some of the stuff that you got? Sure. <laughs> I'll go ahead and show off uh, some uh, little Wayne sign albums. These are uh, vinyls. I won't take up the record at this moment, but uh, uh, so here's one right here. Uh, this mm, is one nice big signature. Here. Huh? Nice big signature on that one. That is, trying to get it up an angle right there. Um, so yeah, it, it is a nice big signature. You can see little Wayne on there. Um, it is a full LP album. It's got the records inside there and everything like that. They're actually white albums, so they actually look pretty cool. I got another one signed by uh, him um, on this. Um, so on that one, you saw that it said funeral for the name of the album, right? Mm -hmm. So if you turn that upside down, this is the second album, a different one. It spells Little Wayne instead of funeral. Huh. So he signed this one upside down. But it's not that bad because when you turn it upside down, it says a little way. Huh. <laughs> so the way oh. he designed the album to have it on there with funeral or little way. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of got one. Yeah, there's, there's a word for that, like when you can yep. how they design that. I forget what it's called, but that's yeah, that's a cool design. I like that. Yeah, so you so really can't sign it upside down. Yep. Um, let's see. I had some other thing, uh, things signed by Al Jor or Jorgensen. I mentioned Garth Brooks didn't sign anything for me, but Al Jorgensen from Ministry Industrial Band from like the '90s um, out there. Um, I got him to sign this guitar pick guard. Pretty cool. Yes. It's kind of like a pearl type of pick guard. This would go on an electric guitar. Um, I also had a couple other things signed by him. I had this uh, record, and he signed it in there in the middle. Nice. 
And I got one more, another one to show off from him. Another one signed in orange, and this is uh, one of their LPs. And kind of getting some reflection there, but it's signed in orange also. Um, one other thing that I didn't get signed in Austin, but I haven't really showed it off to many people. Uh, but I got this here in San Antonio, and I've been kind of getting on the vinyl bug lately. And, you know, everybody goes through different kind of collecting bugs through their life, you know, and things like that. You're collecting Marvel a lot, Star Wars, wh whatever it might be. And I still collect Star Wars and different things like that. But I've been to get into the music like vinyl bug. So mm -hmm. uh, this one I had gotten signed by uh, two members, the, the remaining members of the Pesh Mode. And Very cool. they were, this is one of the big albums that I might, one of my first CDs I actually had uh, back in like 1989 or so. Uh, and as a kid. And I got to meet this, the singer and I got to meet the uh, guitar player, both signed this one. So with some beautiful graphs. So I want to get one of those frames, you know, where I can pull out the, vi the vinyl and you can see the record and this um, on there. Uh, but I've been getting into getting more vinyl. And then, of course, vinyl does have a lot of, you know, extra value on there, you know, maybe compared to that, like eight by 10 that you would get from them. Mm -hmm. And you've so, been doing kind of like with your mystery boxes, you've been doing a lot of music themed boxes, right? Mm -hmm. I've had some music in there. I've had some uh, just all wrestling boxes. This last one I did on Friday uh, was a celebrity with some music items. I had a uh, uh, this uh, Slim Shady uh, vinyl, and the person won this one. So I haven't shipped it out yet. I'm going to work on shipping tomorrow. See if I can get a good angle of that. This is a vinyl still sealed uh, from Eminem. And he's got the, uh, he wrote Shady on there. And uh, yeah, it's his autograph. This was one of the big prizes that came um, uh, in the autograph mystery boxes that I hold. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been having some good music items in there. Also, I had one of those little wings up as an option. They could have chose this, this, or they could have chose uh, this big item right here. Let me grab this thing. They could have chose this Sylvester Stallone with a oh, full and uh, that my over. yeah a big because in opx when they did their signing he only did like a uh, slide stallone on everything so this is full sylvester and yeah. they had the choice of either that eminem record this or the little wayne record uh they went with the eminem record it's still a great item uh but this one's really cool too yeah so that, that would have been mine for sure yeah, definitely big sylvester stallone fan he's He's awesome. It was cool. He, I just uh, saw the new Guardians of the Galaxy, and he's in that one. So that was oh, cool wow. to see him in there. How did you like that one? Uh, I liked it. I thought that was pretty good. You know, I'd definitely like you know a sad kind of end to the storyline, mm -hmm. right? You know, sad to see uh, that it's going to be the last of the Guardians of the Galaxy. They did. You know, we do know that Star Lord's going to not. He's going to return eventually, so it's not the end of his story. But uh, I guess. This particular formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy is the the last go of it, so it's a little bit sad, but uh, it was good. If you like the Gar Guardians of the Galaxy movies, uh, they're more funny. They're you know yeah yeah they're pretty good. So yeah, I, I think remember going to the opening concept. day. I remember going to opening day for Guardians of the Galaxy, and it was great. And people have been I have been reading. I haven't I haven't read any spoilers. I've been reading some posts. People have been saying this is probably the best Marvel movie since Endgame. Um, I don't know if that's true. I haven't seen it myself um out, out there but i look forward to seeing that i'm gonna maybe try to see it in the next week or two yeah and i, I took my kids to it and uh you know my daughter's pretty young but she's very good at movies and um there's a lot of cute critters in there so, so there was like a lot of like <laughs> oh <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> you know all the, the bunch of little baby raccoons and all that kind of stuff so she uh she really liked that <laughs> that's awesome mm -hmm. let's see what you got to show to show off this week yeah, for sure. So I, I added some uh, new Funko Pops to the online store. Oh, so this nice. one is uh, from Elvira. You know, I'm not like a huge Funko Pop collector, but this one was uh, cool. It's one of the diamond collections. So she's got like this glittery red dress. Uh, this one originally came from Zobi. So they, they have these nice uh, pop cases on here with these red blood stains. Um, it looks really cool. It would look really great displayed, signed in orange ink. Uh, I like those um, those blood stains. Um, I've been seeing Zoe put out those cases um, on those. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, they're they're pretty cool cases. Um, and then of course we have I got the Fonz here. There you go. And you know he he used to be a really good signer through the mail, uh, but Henry Winkler like he just like last year stopped signing through the mail. So and that's he doesn't do a whole lot of conventions. He does them sometimes, but he doesn't do a whole lot. So he's been a little bit harder to obtain. 
So, yeah, like no more free autographs from him anymore, unfortunately. So if you want his autograph, you got to go and get it. And uh, what better place than TalesFromTheCollection.com? <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh, Emilio Estevez from the Mighty Ducks so this is this is a cool one I I grew up watching that movie this was from my era in the 90s for sure um nice big green signature now what I like about these pops is that they do have these nice big windows on there you can get some nice signatures the paint pen always looks really good on them so they're excellent for display you don't have to spend any money on framing them either like they're good to go right you have them in a little box you stick them on a shelf boom you're done you don't have to do anything like a shadow box or anything like that you just uh get it signed and then that's the end of the hassle so those are some of my recent additions um just put those up on the store so you can find them there um but i don't know what do you think about what do you think about pops in general are you are you still seeing a lot of demand from them for them i think the pop collectors are definitely still there um, I think that the uh, first big, you know, you know, rush of everybody collecting pops, maybe the average pop collector has definitely slowed down. And we've definitely heard that from the Funko Pop Company, you know, having to get rid of, you know, lots of merchandise that they've had. So the average, you know, person walking by a Walmart or a, you know, uh, a comic book store or maybe not a comic book store, but an average Target or whatever, may, I'm sure the sales have lowered, you know what I mean? I don't know the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, I think the people that collect pops, the people that definitely get pops signed, I think there was still a lot of collectors out there. I think a lot of people, still a lot of value. There's still a lot of pops out there that are worth a lot of money depending on the limited edition that they are, where they came out at, who it is, and uh, things, that, uh, things that type of nature. I do always recommend anybody that's getting a pop sign to always make sure they use a paint pen, because that's another thing I've seen at conventions, people using a regular Sharpie on mm -hmm. a pop window. It will look faded. It will not look right. Do your research on some paint pens, and maybe that's another episode in the future. We can talk about pins almost for a full hour and uh, write on some pop windows um, or write on some uh, photos and different posters and test different pins out and stuff like that. Um, but I think there's definitely a market out there still for sure uh, for people that are collecting. Right. Yeah. If, if uh, the viewers do want to head over to TalesFromTheCollection.com, you can just type in best pins into the search bar there. I do have a pretty extensive article on what the best pens are for different items like jerseys hockey pucks baseballs funko pops and i did buy a whole slew of pens i tested them out on some windows there and on some yeah, like eight by ten photos so you can kind of see what the different pens look like on an actual pop or a photo so it's a pretty awesome. good resource for you guys there um but yeah I'm, I'm definitely agreeing with you there i think the market in general for the unsigned pops i think we're seeing some turbulation there like we all saw that they had to like basically clear out their warehouse and dump a bunch of pops in a landfill which is like insane but uh, i understand why they were doing that i guess just to keep the price from devaluing but uh as far as the signed funko pops go that's uh, i think that's still pretty a hot market because i remember at the last fan expo dallas uh, I was doing a little bit of recording of Troy Baker, who does um, Joel's voice in The Last of Us, the video game. And I was just like shocked at how many people were bringing in a pop for him to sign. It was like every third item was a pop, it seemed like. It was so many people, that was their item of choice to get signed. They didn't want a photo. They didn't want a statue. They didn't want a video game or a print. They wanted a Funko pop. And that was you know not that long ago. So... There's definitely a, a still a high demand with autograph collectors. And I think, like I was saying, it's probably because it's so easily displayed and it's kind of like a no hassle item and it looks nice. Um, yep. So I agree. Yeah, uh, you know what? I just brought up my spreadsheet I have for Dallas Fan Expo coming up in this June. And I am taking orders for out there. Anybody that's checking in, go check out autographalliances.com. I'm taking orders for send-ins and pre-sales for Dallas Fan Expo. But looking at my spreadsheet so far, and I'm early on because really my crunch comes about two weeks ahead of the con. That's when everybody starts wanting to sign up and, and to get their orders in. It always happens every Comic-Con. Uh, but anyways, I'm looking at it. And right now, no lie, I'm close to about 50% 
of all my items this round almost all being pops, either pre-sale oh. pops that I have or pops that are being sent in. Um, so about half, I would let me, let me look at it, maybe 40, 45%. So it's getting close, you know, um, but I still have a month ago and that could definitely change with posters and, you know, other items and photos and things like that. But like you did say, it is kind of a no hassle type of thing. You can order a pop from, uh, from, uh, from, it, like, or from Amazon, from, from Target, from Walmart, or walk into a store that sells pops, grab one, um, a photo finding a good photo, you know, you have to know like where to go get your great photo to, to get that great photo out that has good quality image on it that you can with the pixels. Um, and then do you have any skills on maybe um, editing that photo or anything like that? And then where to print that photo at, you know, so there, there is a lot of things that go into there. Um, but uh, so a pop is an easy, easy thing. And they are, they, they, they do look good to display. I mean, you can have them out there and they're, they're easy to stack up and go right on top of each other, or make a little wall of pops. Yeah, I think uh, the variety of them is pretty cool because like for me, creating cards used to be something that I would go to as signing uh, because they have like such a wide variety of images on there. They you, you can have ones that have shots from like all kinds of different scenes that you might not get or find like a good quality image of online or that you might not see offered through a private signing. And like, you know, it's kind of like the same thing where these Funko Pops, uh, they've made so many of them across so many genres that you can pretty much find a pop for any actor that's going to be at a convention or voice actor so they they're just so versatile and ubiquitous that it just makes it a no-brainer for a lot of people so i think that's probably part of why you're seeing such uh, a big number i wasn't even expecting 50 percent. that's like <laughs> that's like more than it, i was expecting for sure yeah, even it, it, though i know just, the comment but that like i said that number could be skewed because we're nowhere near the finish line so mm -hmm. maybe when they get closer or afterwards i can give you some better stats it's just the yeah, I, I mean, even though I've been, it's been up for about a month or two, it's it, it, I it's always that last like 30 days, last two weeks is the big crunch for everybody. I see a lot like double to triple the amount of orders that I have right now. So I'm sure they're going to be on the way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground in this episode. So I really yep. thank you for joining us today, Brian. Have a good rest of your weekend. All right. You have a good one, man. Bye. Bye.